superficial effect on the mind and spirit of the fetus. It is even better if you place a picture of Canon before you when you start Zazen. Thus the virtues of this bodhisattva which you are reflecting upon will impress themselves upon the mind of your unborn baby. Student. My koan is, from where you are, stop the distant boat moving across the water. Quote. Roshi. Demonstrate your understanding of the spirit of it. Opening square bracket. The student demonstrates. Closing square bracket. That is good. But try it this way. Demonstrating. Dot. Do you understand the true spirit of this? Student. Yes, the boat and I are not two. Roshi. That is right. When you become one with the boat it ceases to be a problem for you. The same is true of your daily life. If you don't separate yourself from the circumstances of your life, you live without anxiety. In summer you adapt yourself to heat, in winter to cold. If you are rich, you live the life of a rich person. If you are poor, you live with your poverty. Were you to go to heaven, you would be an angel. Were to you fall into hell, you would become a devil. In Japan you live like a Japanese, in Canada like a Canadian. Live this way, life isn't a problem. Animals have this adaptability to a high degree. Human beings also have it. But because they imagine they are this or that. Because they fashion notions and ideas of what they ought to be or how they ought to live, they're constantly at war with their environment and themselves. The purpose of this koan, then, is to teach you how to be at one with every aspect of your life. 9. Student I. Man, age 30. Roshi. This is your first session, isn't it? Student. Yes. Roshi. Tell me why you want to practice Sazen. Student. I want to know the meaning of human existence, why we are born and why we die. Roshi. This is an excellent motivation. There are various ways to resolve this problem. Before I go into them, however, let me explain what Kensho is. It is seeing into your true nature and directly realizing that you and the universe are basically one. Once you have perceived this, you will know down to your bowels the meaning of human existence and thereby acquire the peaceful mind that arises from such a revolutionary insight. The road to such knowledge is through Zazen. As you know, there are many ways to practice. You have been counting your breath, following your breath, and doing Shikan Taza. It is possible to come to awakening through these exercises alone, but the quickest way is through a koan. In ancient days there was no koan system, yet many people came to self-realization. But it was hard and took a long time. The use of koans started about a thousand years ago and has continued down to the present. One of the best koans, because the simplest, is mu. This is its background. A monk came to Joshu, a renowned Zen master in China hundreds of years ago, and asked, Has a dog Buddha nature or not? Joshu retorted, Mu. Literally, the expression means, no, or, nothing, but the significance of Joshu's answer does not lie in the word. Mu is the expression of the living, functioning, dynamic Buddha nature. What you must do is discover the spirit or essence of this mu, not through intellectual analysis but by search into your innermost being. Then you must demonstrate before me, concretely and vividly, that you understand mu as living truth, without recourse to conceptions, theories, or abstract explanations. Remember, you can't understand mu through ordinary cognition. You must grasp it directly with your whole being. This is how to practice. If possible, sit with your legs in the full or half lotus posture. If you can sit neither full nor half lotus, sit with your legs crossed in the most comfortable way. If even crossing your legs is impossible, use a chair. Your back must be straight. 
After taking several deep breaths and slowly exhaling, swing the body from side to side, first in large arcs and then in smaller ones, until the body comes to rest at center. Then breathe naturally. You are now ready to begin zazen. First repeat the word, mu, not audibly but in your mind. Concentrate on becoming one with it. Do not think of its meaning. I repeat. Just concentrate wholeheartedly on becoming one with Mu. At first your efforts will be mechanical, but this is unavoidable. Gradually, however, all of you will become involved. Since the human mind is accustomed from childhood to functioning centrifugally, like the rays of a light bulb which fan outward, your aim at first is to bring your mind to a focus. After you are able to concentrate on Mu, then question yourself. What is Mu? What can it be? You must ask the question right from the guts. When the questioning reaches the point of gripping you like a vice so that you can think of nothing else, suddenly you will perceive your true nature and will exclaim. Oh, now I know. With true enlightenment the problem of suffering and death is resolved. Roshi. Do you have anything you wish to say? Student. Yes. When the bell rang for everybody to get up and walk around, an old woman began to sob. I don't know why he did it, but the monitor began cracking her with the Kayasaku. At that point I, suddenly began thinking about the meaning of life and why human beings suffer. Without realizing it, I began to cry too, and then the tears just gushed forth. I haven't cried that way since I was a child of seven. What does this mean? Roshi. Many changes take place in your body mind when you do zazen with zeal and devotion. Your emotions become more sensitive, your thinking sharper and clearer, you will stronger. Above all, you experience a feeling of gratitude. Because your emotions have already become more sensitive and responsive, when you heard this woman crying you began to cry yourself. She probably didn't know why she was crying either. She was struck at that time to encourage her to put forth her best effort. What happened shows me that you are doing zazen with zeal and sincerity. 10. Student J. Woman, age 33. Student. My last teacher assigned me the Cohen Mu two years ago. I've been practicing it, but frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. I just seem to be repeating it mechanically. I was told to become one with it and in that way I would get Kensho, but I am not even sure I know what Kensho is. Before I came to this temple I had difficulty both in making myself understood and in understanding what was said to me, as there was never adequate interpretation available. I suppose that is why I am so badly informed. Roshi. It is useless to repeat Mu mechanically. Kensho is the direct awareness that you are more than this puny body or limited mind. Stated negatively, it is the realization that the universe is not external to you. Positively, it is experiencing the universe as yourself. So long as you consciously or unconsciously think in terms of a distinction between yourself and others, you are caught in the dualism of I and not I. This I is not indigenous to our true nature, being merely an illustration produced by the six senses. But because this illusory ego I has been treated as a real entity throughout this existence and previous ones, it has come to occupy the deepest level of the subconscious mind. Your single-hearted concentration on Mu will gradually dispel this I concept from your consciousness. With its complete banishment you suddenly experience oneness. This is Kensho. The traditional Rinzai way of handling this koan is to let you struggle with it willy-nilly. You repeatedly ask yourself, what is Mu? What can it be? The first answer that comes to your mind you bring before the Roshi, who promptly brushes it aside. No, that's not Mu. Search further. He commands. 
Next time you present what amounts to virtually the same answer. Now the Roshi may scold. I told you that is not Mew. Bring me Mew. You try again and again, but every solution you can conceive or imagine the Roshi rejects. Such encounters usually last only a minute or two. Eventually, after months or years of exhaustive reasoning, your mind reaches the point where it is emptied of all thought forms and you come to the sudden realization of Mu. With students thirsting for truth this method was effective. But nowadays students have less ardor as well as less stick to it -iveness. What is even worse, incompetent teachers pass students who have not truly experienced the spirit of the Kohen, in order to encourage them to stay on. My own teacher, Harada Roshi, who had studied and practiced Rinzai Zen for many years, sought, out of the greatest kindness, to eliminate this anguish struggle of past days by telling his students in advance that any conception of Mu no matter how subtle or ingenious, is unavailing and that therefore they must bend every effort to becoming one with Mu. But the danger here is of lapsing into a mechanical repetition of it. Quite apart from all this, however, there are people for whom the Cohen Mu is distasteful. Regardless of how hard they try to embrace it, it never grips them. You may be such a person. Student. I find it completely distasteful. Roshi. In that case it is better to change your koan. I might assign you Sakishu, what is the sound of one hand? Or Honrai no Memoku, what was my face before my parents' birth? Or just what am I? Or who am I? Whichever would be most absorbing for you. Student. The last would be the most meaningful. Roshi. Very well. Henceforth this will be your Cohen. Student. Do I treat it the same as Mu? Roshi. Yes. But you must not ask the question mechanically, like a stamping machine. When eating, ask yourself, what is eating? With an intense yearning resolve the question. When listening, inquire of yourself, who is listening? When seeing, who is seeing? While walking, who is walking? Quote, opening square bracket. Hereafter the statement my koan is, who am I? That the opening of each dokasan of this student will be omitted. Closing square bracket. Roshi. Do you have any questions? Student. Yes. When I question myself, who am I? I say to myself, I am bones, I am blood, I am skin. Where do I go from there? Roshi. Then ask yourself, what is it that has this blood? What is it that has these bones? What is it that has this skin? Quote, student, it seems to me that I have to do two things. To become one with eating, for instance, as well as to ask myself, who is eating? Is that right? Roshi. No, only question yourself as to who is eating. Your mind must become one mass of profound questioning. This is the quickest way to the realization of your true nature. Asking, who am I, is really no different from asking, what is Mu? Quote, student. To be honest, I have no burning desire for Kensho. I wonder why. This bothers me. Roshi. People who have been compelled to face painful life. Situations, such as the death of a beloved one, for example, are frequently precipitated into asking the most searching questions about life and death. This questioning gives rise to an acute thirst for self-understanding so that they can alleviate their own as well as mankind's sufferings. With true enlightenment, disquiet and anxiety are replaced by inner joy and serenity. Listening to the Buddhas teachings in my lectures, you will develop within you a longing for self-realization, which will grow deeper and deeper. Student. Last night during Zazen I was often troubled by the thought that my desire for enlightenment is weak. Why, I kept asking myself, do I not strive more intensely like so many around me? At one o'clock this morning I was ready to quit. 
though only four hours earlier I had determined to sit up in Zazen all night. In the kitchen, where I went for a drink, I saw the old cook nun washing clothes. Watching her, I felt ashamed of my own feeble efforts. The other day you told me that those who have the strongest desire for enlightenment are people who have suffered in life. You said that they keenly wish Kensho so as to relieve their own suffering as well as the suffering of others. The fact is that in my teens I experienced considerable suffering. Perhaps that is why I felt so compassionate toward others and why my friends and acquaintances often came to me for advice and help. Some years later when I heard about Zen I began to practice it, after a fashion, in the United States. Then a few years ago I came to Japan, having given up my work in America, and began the traditional practice of Zen. The sympathy and compassion I had always felt toward people before I undertook Zazen have dried up in me. I have experienced so much pain in Zen that I no longer think of saving anybody but myself. I hate having to suffer. So my life in Zen, far from making me sensitive to the sufferings of others and kindling in me a desire to save them, has destroyed whatever altruistic feelings I possessed, leaving me cold and selfish. Roshi. As I observe your face and manner, I see neither insensitivity nor selfishness. On the contrary, I see much that is canon-like. I am sure that most people who come in contact with you sense your natural warmth and feel well disposed. Toward you, what you have described to me, rather than making you out to be cold-hearted and selfish, reveals a deepening of your natural sympathies, but all this lies outside your consciousness. People who, think of themselves as kind-hearted and sympathetic are truly neither. That you no longer are consciously aware of these emotions only shows how deeply entrenched they have become. There are many people who spend all their time giving aid to the needy and joining movements for the betterment of society. To be sure, this ought not to be discounted. But their root anxiety, growing out of their false view of themselves and the universe, goes unrelieved.